Muhammad's boom boom room, where all of my guests either agree with me completely or they go boom. I am your host, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon me. And with me now is the captain of YouTube's trust and safety team, a team that is dedicated to shielding me from criticism. Captain Trust and Safety, so nice of you to join me. Your name, Captain Trust and Safety, makes you sound like a superhero. Well, frankly, here on YouTube's uh, Trust and Safety team, we view ourselves as superheroes, protecting the uh, ignorant masses from ideas that we don't think they should be exposed to. I mean, I'm basically Superman. If Superman were a self-absorbed middle-aged loser who got paid by a tech tyrant to tell people what they can and uh, cannot think. By the way, how did you get that stupid-looking scar on your face? Well, uh, th that's a, uh, a great question. Uh, as, as it turns out, uh, our most uh, recent channel banning party, one of the members of YouTube's trust and safety team went absolutely crazy. He suggested that people should uh, be able to think for themselves and that tech tyrants shouldn't be trying to uh, control people's moral and religious and political views. Needless to say, uh, Malie broke out and we all began pummeling his throat and uh, ears and, and face for uh, making that ridiculous statement. Safety team, you say? Yes, uh, uh, unfortunately, the trust and safety team is composed entirely of uh, total cowards who've never fought for anything in their entire lives. So this was actually the first fight for all of us, and uh, it was a mess. Someone accidentally smashed a laptop across my face. This was, of course, the first injury I've ever had. I've been writing about it all week in, uh, in my journal. It sounds like YouTube has put together an angry mob that's ready to destroy anyone who gets in the way. What an interesting strategy. Well, our, our strategy on the trust and safety team is uh, simple. We take a bunch of young people who went off to college and uh, were indoctrinated and radicalized by leftist PC propaganda until they became spoiled narcissists who hide in safe spaces all day, wetting their beds and weeping at the mere thought of someone disagreeing with them. Wetting their beds and weeping? Sounds like Aisha on her wedding night. Yes, and once these youngsters have been molded into the ultimate tantrum-throwing crybabies, uh, uh, YouTube gives them complete control over what grown adults around the world can and cannot say so that we can e eventually transform YouTube into the world's uh, largest online uh, safe space. Tell me, how is YouTube's trust and safety team any different than Antifa? Well, in, in terms of our goals, we're, we're really no different from Antifa. We... We simply have different ways of reaching our goals. Antifa tries to get its way through physical intimidation, whereas uh, we believe in getting our way through uh, digital intimidation. And what is it that you want exactly? What's your goal, Captain? Well, the goal, obviously, is a leftist uh, utopia where the only people who are allowed to speak are... Uh, people who believe exactly what we believe. Everyone else is cancelled. This sounds very different from the more inviting tone you've taken in the past. Tell me, why did you pretend for so long that YouTube championed diversity of thought? Well, every uh, tech tyrant has to begin by appealing to everyone. Notice that all of the major tech companies use the same uh, three-step method. Step one, invite everyone to your platform. Tell them that you're neutral and uh, that you believe in all sorts of free speech garbage. Humans are creatures of habit, so if you get them coming back to your platform uh, day after day, they'll soon become uh, addicted. Step two, use your newfound popularity to push all competitors uh, 
uh, out of business. At YouTube, we did this by paying uh, content creators, thus drawing the best content creators to, to our platform, starving our competitors of quality content, and uh, eventually achieving a total monopoly. Uh, step three, once everyone is addicted to your platform and you've established the aforementioned uh, monopoly, you uh, quietly transform your site from one of open-minded inclusion to one of narrow-minded uh, indoctrination. Anyone who doesn't uh, fall in line is demonetized, uh, deplatformed, and destroyed. Usually, I don't like the number three. But in this case, I love this three-step method. It reminds me of the three stages of jihad. When I was weak and didn't have many subscribe followers, I preached a message of peace and tolerance. Later, when I had formed alliances and had more followers, but still not enough to conquer Arabia, I preached defense of jihad. We would fight people for fighting us or even insulting me. Still later, when I became the most powerful force in Arabia, I preached offense of jihad. Everyone had to be violently subjugated. It's good to see modern tech giants using my playbook. Uh, indeed, at, uh, at YouTube, we take the tactics that have been used by the most successful fascists of the past, and we adapt them for uh, digital fascism. So... YouTube is currently on step three? Uh, certainly. We're, we're busy employing a uh, variety of tactics that will ultimately silence all dissent. If we don't like a creator's ideas, we start by demonetizing his videos. We follow this up by deranking his content, meaning that we make it harder for uh, people to find him. So his views will plummet. If he doesn't learn his lesson and instead stubbornly clings to his, uh, his own beliefs rather than mindlessly accepting ours, we can point to virtually anything he says and call it hate speech. And there's nothing whatsoever he can do about it because, let's face it, we have all the power here. We can delete his videos with no explanation. We can uh, delete his channel with no explanation. Uh, once he's been completely banned from our platform, what can he do? complain on his blog, whine about us on uh, Twitter. Uh, come on, uh, we're, we're YouTube, owned by Google, too big to fail, too big to care. Isn't it kind of callous of you to throw your own content creators under the camel when they're the ones who brought people to your platform in the first place? I mean, people didn't come to YouTube just to stare at the YouTube logo. They came because creators were making videos. Videos that educate, videos that entertain, videos that inspire. And now, once these content creators have done all the work of getting billions of people to your platform, you have a team of digital bullies sitting around accusing them of hate speech and banning the content that their community loves? I suppose this, uh, this may seem callous and cruel and cold-blooded, but... Uh, our creators have served their purpose. Yes, our site became dominant through the uh, blood, sweat, and tears of the creators who spent years of their lives uh, tirelessly producing content for our platform. It's the creators who drew viewers to our platform and kept them coming back for more. But now that we have a monopoly, we're, we're bigger than our creators, and we can treat them uh, like garbage because there's nothing they can do about it. People have been trained to keep coming back to YouTube and they're, uh, they're not going to simply stop because we demonetize or derank some videos or because we delete some channels. Again, we're too big to care. If a woman spends years, uh, years of her life uh, pouring her heart and soul into the content on our platform and during that time she builds a community of uh, viewers who are like an enormous multinational family, uh, what's that to us? We're, we're a tech tyranny, not an online uh, community center. Why shouldn't we crush that woman like a bug if someone on the trust and safety team doesn't like something she says? Believe me, when we delete her channel, it's really her fault for not adhering to what we call the, the coward's creed. Everyone on YouTube is, uh, is required to adopt the, the coward's creed, which 
basically states that they agree to believe everything that the trust and safety team learned in, uh, in their safe spaces in college. Captain, you talk about the leading channels with just the push of a button. But tell me, how is the leading channels, because you don't like the content, any different from past generations burning books because they didn't like the content? Well, uh, books are made of paper, unlike YouTube channels, and that, that's pretty much the only difference. So the YouTube Trust and Safety Team is the online equivalent of book burners? Well, uh, no question. We, we ban videos for saying things we don't like. We ban channels for uh, saying things we don't like. Sometimes we'll uh, spout some nonsense about violating our uh, community guidelines, but let's face it, we ban content we don't like just as book burners burn books uh, they don't like. Tell me about these community guidelines. Well, there are, there are actually uh, two sets of community guidelines. There's the set that you can read uh, on YouTube, which is basically uh, completely meaningless. It's completely meaningless to me, because as everyone knows, I can't read. But in addition to the uh, useless public set of community guidelines, there's the set that we really use when uh, we decide whom to ban at the next book burning rally, I mean, uh, channel banning party. So there's an unwritten list of community guidelines? Uh, of course there is. The unwritten community guidelines basically state that it's wicked, evil, racist, and uh, bigoted to say anything that could uh, conceivably hurt the feelings of a fragile uh, leftist screwball. In short, any speech that wouldn't be allowed in a college safe space is uh, hate speech. Wouldn't your content creators be less confused if you posted these community guidelines? Well, if, uh, if we posted them, they, uh, they wouldn't be unwritten. And uh, besides, we, we want our creators to be confused. If we keep them in a state of uh, constant confusion as to what they are and are not allowed to say, They'll, uh, they'll fear us, and as you know better than anyone, uh, fear is a powerful motivator. This is why we ban content and entire channels without giving them any indication what they did wrong. It's a lesson to other channels uh, not to mess with us. I'm starting to like this YouTube trust and safety team. Now let's get personal for a moment. Tell me, what do these unwritten community guidelines say about the teachings of Muhammad? Peace be upon me. Well, uh, as everyone knows, uh, anyone who mocks or criticizes or even questions your clear commands to uh, terrorize your enemies and uh, violently subjugate the entire world and kill apostates must be a, uh, a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering uh, bigot. Uh, as such, anyone who says anything negative about you uh, must be shamed and uh, silenced in the name of tolerance and diversity. Alhamdulillah! It's wonderful to see YouTube giving me my proper honor and respect, just like Facebook and Twitter. Tell me, do you give the same honor and respect to other religious figures? Not remotely. Uh, for some strange reason that no one can explain, you are the only religious leader in history that we uh, won't allow anyone to mock. Peace be upon me? So, atheists and other infidels can post videos mocking God and Isa and the Bible and YouTube won't get involved? Uh, wh why would we care what they do? And people can mock Buddha and Confucius and Shiva and Vishnu and Moses on YouTube? Uh, of course, it's called... Uh... It's called freedom of speech. And Christians can mock atheist speakers? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Christians could spend all day mocking uh, Richard Dawkins or uh, Sam Harris, and the trust and safety team wouldn't, uh, wouldn't dream of stopping them. But if someone mocks me in my teaching, then you suddenly decide to get involved. Is that right? Uh, as, as I've already said, uh, only a racist would criticize or even question 
uh, anything you say, uh, even when you promoted a, a wife uh, beating uh, child marriage and uh, the uh, rape of, uh, of female captives, the YouTube Trust and Safety Team will just not tolerate uh, racist hate speech uh, against you. Alhamdulillah! Islamic law demands that I be given special treatment, and YouTube gives me special treatment. Tell me, why has the trust and safety team decided to enforce Sharia law? Is it because you see the beauty of Al-Islam? Well, uh, to be perfectly frank, the uh, special treatment we give you has uh, nothing to do with Sharia or with the uh, beauty of Islam. We just have different expectations for, uh, for your followers. And because we have different expectations for your followers, uh, we insist that you be treated uh, with kid gloves. Why do you have different expectations for my followers? Is it because the great God Allah declares that my followers are the best of all peoples, while unbelievers are the worst of all creatures? Uh, not quite, uh, Prophet Muhammad. You see, uh, YouTube's uh, trust and safety team, uh, much like the trust and safety teams of uh, Facebook and Twitter, views your followers as uh, utterly incapable of living by the same rules that everyone else has to live by. We, we expect everyone else to be able to deal with uh, criticism. We expect everyone else to act like adults and to respond to speech with more speech, not not with violence, and to respect other people's rights to express their views. But uh, when it comes to your followers, we, we think of them as, uh, as savages. So it angers us when someone criticizes your religion, because uh, when someone criticizes your religion, he's, he's treating it like we treat other religions, and uh, therefore he's, uh, he's treating your followers the way we treat followers of other religions. And uh, we simply can't allow that sort of uh, equal treatment. Wait a minute! Are you saying that the people who criticize and mock my religion actually have more respect for my followers than you do? Because when they criticize and mock me, they're treating my followers like they treat everyone else? And that when you silence people for criticizing and mocking me, you're actually insulting my followers by treating them differently from everyone else? It, it's called the soft bigotry of low expectations, Prophet uh, Muhammad. Uh, look it up on Google, our soul-crushing, goose-stepping, demonic overlord. I told you, I can't read! And uh, we don't expect you to. Uh, we'll do all the reading for you, and uh, we'll treat you like our uh, little pet puppy. Did you just call me a dog? Look, uh, Prophet Muhammad, as, uh, as humiliating as it must be for you uh, to see your followers being treated as subhuman by leftists, uh, the fact is uh, you need us. You need us to protect you from critics because, uh, let's face it, your claims uh, wouldn't survive for five seconds without us screaming racist at, uh, at anyone who tries to think rationally about your ideology. So uh, just sit back and let us leftist uh, tech tyrants uh, prop up your, uh, your religion. Wow. This must be the most dysfunctional relationship in all of history. I'm using you to protect me from criticism while I plot to annihilate you and you attack all my critics because you're more racist than the Klansmen I interviewed. We're, we're not exactly Romeo and Juliet, but uh, uh, we'll make it work. As much as I'd like to blow you up for having so much contempt for me and my followers, I guess you're just too valuable to me to destroy right now. Keep shielding me from criticism, and I promise to destroy you last. Uh, that, that, that's a good boy. Who, who, who's, a, who's a good boy? Muhammad. Muhammad's a good boy. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad's a good boy, yeah. Oh, he, he gets a treat because he's a good boy. Now, who, who wants to catch a frisbee? Who wants to catch a frisbee? Prophet Muhammad wants to catch a frisbee? What a good boy. Prophet Muhammad wants to catch a frisbee because he's a good boy. What a, what a good little puppy. He's, he's our little puppy. Oh, oh, what a good little puppy. Now, now sit. Sit, little puppy. Sit for us. 
Okay, now, now, look up, beg, beg. Good boy, good boy, good little boy. Oh, what a good little puppy he is. Oh, who's the best, the best little puppy? Oh, what a wonderful little puppy you are. Oh, ro roll over, roll over for us. Roll over for Google. Yes, roll over for Google. Roll over for YouTube, good boy. Oh, give a kissy. Give Google kisses. Who wants to give Google kisses?